Hello students, let's start the first lesson of geography, globe and maps. Before we go into this lesson, let's recall what exactly geography is. So the word geography comes from two words that is geo and graphy. Geo is the earth and graphy means to describe or to write. So geography is the science of description of the earth's surface in its present condition. So geography entails the detailed understanding of the surface of earth according to what it is at the present movement. Now let's start with the globe. Most of us have seen a globe before either in our schools or elsewhere. So this is what a globe looks like. You can see that it's supported on top and on bottom. It's tilted, it's not straight and you can also see that on the surface of the globe we have the different places of earth drawn according to their position. In the last chapter you have studied about the shape and size of the earth. The earth is geoid in shape and is represented by a globe. So the globe is a representative of earth. The photographs taken of the earth from the satellites give a real shape of the earth. But we can see only one side of the earth. The globe which is the model of the earth can give us the view of the other side also since we rotate the globe. So the photographs that we have taken of our earth from satellites, the problem with so here is an example of one such photograph. As you can see, so this is South America, okay. So in this photograph, you can only see these two continents that is part of North America and South America. However, when you think about a globe, this it's rotating, okay. So this is one of the advantages of the globe over pictures. You can see the different sides of the planet. Now let's look into the features of the globe. Before we do that, as usual, let's start taking notes. So first, what did we learn? We learned that, okay, so this is the first, let's go down. So this is the first point. What did we learn? We learned that the globe is the representation of earth and we remember that the earth is geoid in shape. What is the difference between globes and picture is that globe helps to view all sides of the planet whereas in pictures we can only see one time one side at one time okay now let's move into the features of the globe. The globe is a miniature model of the earth. Miniature is something that is smaller in shape than the actual thing itself. So a globe is definitely not the size of the planet. It's a miniature model of the earth. It is a true, true representation of the earth's spherical shape and not flat as seen on the map. So we all know that the earth is not flat. It's geoid in shape. So the globe is closer to the earth's shape than maps are. Besides, it gives us information about many features of the earth. It's a simple teaching learning aid. So using a globe, it's very helpful for us to get a primitive understanding about our planet. And using that fundamental understanding, we can learn more things based on the shape of the globe. It can be kept on the table and rotated. It helps us to learn about the different geographical concepts. So these are the different features of the globe. Now let's look into the uses of the globe. Here we have the uses of the globe. The globe is useful to know the shape of the earth. 
So the first thing, since we learned that the globe and earth are nearly the same shape, it helps us to understand the shape of the earth. It helps us to understand the position, shape and size of continents, oceans and seas. So it gives us a better understanding about the relative positions of different continents. So you know that you are in India. From your position in India, you will know that if you want to get to a different place, whether you have to travel south or north, east or west when you look at the globe. Similarly, it also gives us understanding of oceans and seas. The lines of latitude and longitude on the globe help us locate places and political boundaries. So this system which uses latitudes and longitudes, it's very helpful in pinpointing a particular location on the globe. In fact, if you have ever used Google Maps before, if you don't know the exact name of the place, you can also use latitudes and longitudes to pinpoint a particular location. Let's take a look at how the system of latitudes and longitude work. So latitudes and longitudes, they are just imaginary lines that go along the earth to help us pinpoint any particular location. So we use the central, that is the imaginary central line that is equator as the basis for latitudes. So latitudes are the lines that go parallel to the equator. You can imagine it as from one side to another. Whereas longitudes, they go from top to bottom. Just think of the word long, long is lengthwise. That is why longitudes are the ones that go from top to bottom. So the equator acts as degree zero for latitudes and we can go on increasing the numbering northwise and southwise as we move towards the North Pole and South Pole respectively. So that North Pole and South Pole become 90 degree north and 90 degree south. With respect to the latitude uh, longitudes, we have the prime meridian at zero degrees and you can go on increasing it as we move left and right. So using this system, how do we locate any places? This should make it easier. So like I told you, this is the equator. This is degree zero. Okay. So as you move, imagine that you're moving up. That is 15 degree north. So you're somewhere over here. And then you say 90 degree with respect to the longitudes. So the intersection of these two comes somewhere over here that is in India. Okay, so that is how you use the system to locate any particular place. Now, let's understand the next point with respect to the globe. A good globe helps us understand the inclination of the axis, movements of the earth, rotation, revolution, their effects, day and night and seasons. So with the help of the globe, it's easier to demonstrate how the earth moves and how with respect to the sun, the earth receives light and how this causes day and night and different seasons. So with a good source of light, for example, a torch, you can understand how day and night happens using a globe. You can also understand it if you just have anything spherical, for example, a ball, so that you can rotate it to see how it's light on one side and dark on the other. Up next, it gives general information about the geographical features such as mountains, plateaus, plains, deserts, islands and rivers. So these are the different uses of a globe. And this one is a satellite picture of the earth similar to the one we saw earlier. Even on this one, you can only see one side of the planet. Here you can see part of Africa. Okay. Next, let's introduce maps a little bit so that we can complete it in our 
next session the globe can give us only very general information about the earth maps are very essential to get detailed information about a place state or a country and also about other geographical features so globe is a learning aid whereas a map is going to give us more practical information about any specific place a diagrammatic representation of the whole earth or part of it on a flat surface according to scale is called a map so this is the definition of a map you should copy this down in your notes so let's go to our notes and you need to add the definition of a map as i've given in the textbook so the science and art of map ma map making is called as cartography okay so the science and art of map ma making is called as cartography so whenever you come across these words it may seem that these two have got nothing in common so cart you may imagine that this is something related to cart okay but there is a field of study called as etymology okay let me just write that down here so it's called etymology if you are interested in understanding the origin of words etymology is going to be very helpful in fact you can use resources such as the internet to help you find the origin of different words this can be very interesting for example if you want to know the etymology of the word cartography it comes from a french word carte that means map okay and graphy like we learned in geography is to write or to describe so cartography literally means the description of maps or the creation of maps so the science and art of map making is known as cartography the collection of various types of maps bound by bound as a book is called as an atlas so most of you would have seen or most of us would have an atlas an atlas is a collection of different maps up next we will be talking about the different types of maps and i will see you in the next video where we explain the different types of maps in the next video we will be understanding maps in detail before that let's just cover up the different exercises pertaining to globe and introduction of map what is a globe so as usual you can either refer to your notes or you can go back to the part of globe and refer to the answer so here we have the introduction of globe and the meaning there are different places from which you can take the description of the globe here they say the globe which is a model of the earth so you can say that the globe is a model of the earth over here we have it in more detail where it is said that the globe is a miniature model of the earth so this can be the definition of the globe similarly for the third question here is the answer that is what is a map is the question and the answer is it's a diagrammatic representation of the whole earth or a part of it on a flat surface according to scale okay so this is a map now let's look at the second question mention any two uses of a globe so this is quite easy you have more than two i think you have four uses of the globe so you can choose any you have five so you can choose any two of them and write it down so these are the answers to the first three questions i will see you all in the next video where we talk about maps in detail and solve the remaining questions